When I was a little boy, I used to like to trap. I grew up hunting and fishing and trapping and climbing around the creek banks. It's just always been a hobby. Trap is sprung. I don't know if we got a critter or not. Now, who'd you learn this from? My granddad, Little John, was raised between the lakes, and it was a way of life for those people. It's a raccoon, and they taught me a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that they do. When you work these traps, always work them with the safety latches on. I'm gonna put a fresh bait in because I'd really like to catch an otter. Now, what is the safety latch? The safety latch is this little hook. Right. And all it does is hook over that other spring. So if you throw this trap, it's not enough to hurt you. Gotcha. I'll set this one and trip it without the safety latches just to show you the difference in what it does. Critter comes along, trips the safe latch. Whoa! That's why you don't work without the safety latches. I see. How many we got? How many we gonna check today? We've only got 14 out today. We set some traps yesterday afternoon, so we would have some some animals maybe this morning to show you. Yeah, that one doesn't have anything in it, but the good thing about this boat trapping, you can just cruise on by and you don't have to stop. Looks like in the sand here, there's been a possum. And I noticed uh, there was some otter sign here and a coon. And that looks like maybe, might even be a fox track right there. So this shoreline is all rocky, except for just places where there'd be little sand. Mm -hmm. Everything likes to come around the sand pile and play. So good spot. Good spot. And the otter like to get out and play in that sand. But for some reason, he didn't like our bait. It's probably two days old and they don't like They want a, it fresh. They want a fresh bait throw your old bait out. Put in a new bait. Set the trap back in the cage. These cages are something that I, I kind of designed myself that uh, it, gives a, it gives the animal an opportunity to see the bait. It's a visual. So it uh, a lot of times, if that were a, a solid box or a bucket, they wouldn't go in it because they can't see. But like it is here, it gives a good visual. So it, they're easier to catch that way. You know, you're actually doing a service to people. We all love the otter and we all love the raccoon, but there are areas where these animals do a huge amount of damage. Yeah, and, and we have a boat dock over here across the bay that's called us about otter damage on the docks. So we know we're in an area where they're at and we do two things. We help them with their otter control and gives us an opportunity to trap also. Oh, that's nasty. Can you imagine a family getting on that pontoon toon boat over there? I mean, this thing is a mess. Some, some of them have chewed the seats out and thousands of dollars worth of damage. And that was a pontoon boat. Uh, what if he gets in one of these $300,000 cruisers? And uh, when they come down from the spring and all their, all their cushions and seats are ruined and the carpet's ruined and uh, this stuff doesn't just clean up real easy either. What you don't see is what goes on inside the boat because they'll get in under a boat cover and just eat the seats and all up on, a, on these boats. If you get it on you or on your boat or on your shoes, it's there to stay. They like the fresh bait and and yesterday, when we got bait, all we could get were buffalo heads instead of catfish. And to be honest with you, they really like the catfish better. We're gonna go, we're gonna go back here to a culvert that goes under a railroad. It's a travel corridor for the river River otter and the coons and, and beaver. Legally, what do you have to do to, to uh, set traps? Uh, you need landowner permission and you need a trapping license and a hunting license. This is a pretty good coon. And there is a regulation that requires your land set traps to be 10 feet apart. Uh, if the trap's in the water, you can set them as close as you like. What's happening on the beaver, on this culvert, on the other side of this culvert, there's a small lake and there's, they have a dam built on the other side of the culvert. 
He's, when they swim through from the main lake to the secondary lake over there, instead of crawling over the top of this rock pile, that beaver's more apt to swim through this small channel that's on this side. As we've moved this riprap to create that channel so that makes that beaver want to come through this direction. I'm gonna go over here and get this trap, get that coon out of it. This is number three coon out of, we've only run a dozen traps, so it's not, that's not a big trap line. Uh, a lot of trappers have trapped 50 traps. Yeah, we've only got out a dozen, so we're just playing. We're not really getting. So that's really not bad for a dozen yeah, traps. Yeah, for though. a dozen traps, it's not too bad. Now, how much uh, typically will you get for a, a raccoon? A raccoon pelt's probably gonna bring this year seven bucks. So the fur prices are gone. You can't make any money trapping. Well, it's a good thing somebody's doing out. it though, because I mean, obviously there's a need. Some of these animals are becoming pests and well, there's a need for it to be done in, in some areas. Right? Sure, and if we don't trap the raccoons, especially around the depredation areas, they'll be in people's uh, garbage and they'll be in their boats and they'll be in their houses and they get in the attics of those houses. So. If we don't keep the numbers down, they'll just get out of control. Mm -hmm.